guys, we've got another Sew Together pattern voted on, chosen a winner. And this month for April, we all chose, uh, we were all voting between skirts. And uh, it was an interesting time putting together the four options that we had. But ultimately, everyone voted on the blue dot patterns, no zip skirt. This pattern is freaking genius because of the way that you get in and out of it. There's literally no zipper. Um, it it kind of, if you've made vintage skirts before, this will be familiar to you, but if you haven't, you're going to be like mind blown, but it, it kind of combines, I don't even know how to explain it. I was going to say it kind of combines a wrap, but that's misleading. There's a button closure. You open the buttons and the whole skirt on the side kind of comes, not the whole thing, but a lot of the skirt comes undone and that's how you get in and out of it. And then it folds back together and you button it back and that's how it's really, really, really so, so, so cool. So you have what looks like a traditional A-line skirt without a single zipper in sight. I love this pattern so much and so happy that you guys chose it. So let's take a deeper dive into the pattern. Let's talk about fabrics. Let's talk about fit. Let's talk about all of that stuff like we usually do. Okay, so it says, this clever no zip entry and easy to sew A-line skirt has a fitted waist slash pockets and button and hook and eye closure. It comes in three lengths and is a great project for beginners or someone looking for a quick wardrobe addition. Um, it has your pattern info, um, fabric requirements, medium and bottom weight fabrics like denim, twill, corduroy, suiting, sateen, poplin, faux suede, and linen. Here are your fabric requirements. And then your notions, you just need some buttons, hook and eyes, um, some interfacing and contrast thread for top stitching if you were gonna choose that. Okay, so here is some photos. Oop, it's gonna zoom in as I go over it. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea of the design there on the right-hand side with the um, line drawings, center front seam, slash pockets, there's the button closure and a nice big like one and a half inch waistband possibly sits at your true hip or true waist. I love that. The sizing, she has finished garment measurements here for the waist and hip, body measurements in inches and then body measurements in centimeters. So your waist, um, the finish is 27 up to 41 inches. The hip is 42 up to 56 and that's finished. That's including all of the wearing and design ease. Here's a cutie little photo of it done in denim. You can see there with the um, contrast top stitching, how nice that looks. You do have three links. I think this one is the middle length. Then you have this little side view from suede. So nice. This is her wearing the one that the first picture that was on the dress form. That's got to be the longer length. And I feel like that's got to be like a cotton wall, maybe, maybe a poplin. Um, there are a lot of really, really cute versions of this on Instagram as well. So if you're looking for more photos, go check those out. So I just recently reorganized all my fabric. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that I'm doing a 30 day challenge which we're about halfway through. So um, fabric was last week. So I've got it all nice and organized by weight. So these are my heavy-ish weight wovens. And I thought this would be a good place for us to start to find some appropriate fabrics for this pattern. So first up, I have something kind of like... Um, denim but doesn't look like denim this is actually a twill weave it is a pottery barn sheet <laughs> that I got from Goodwill and you know a lot of the photos that we saw of the um garment I think she must have released this in the fall so they're a little bit like you know cooler weather she's wearing them with tights they're you know fall fabrics denim and suede um this is a great way to do twill but in like a springy kind of version right can you not see a cute little skirt out of this um, in addition to twill weave slash denim, we've got a suede in this really beautiful color. Suede's come in all kinds of different colors. This one's kind of like a tinsel twill, so it um, is heavier like suede, but it will have a little bit of drape to it as in addition to that. So that could be a fun, like it'll fall a little bit closer to the body rather than stick straight out A-line. 
I have all my denims down here, which are good options. Um, I'm trying to think of something else a little bit unique. I mean, we have this print. Don't worry, you guys, I'm not gonna mess up the fabrics, but we have an, a curtain that looks like this. That could be really fun for the spring. Um, this is, I don't know, there's a little bit of texture on it. Can you see? So in a way, it's kind of like, I don't know what that is. I feel like I've seen it before, but the name is not coming to me. But the colors are really pretty. And I think when you cut it all up to make it into a skirt, maybe it won't look like a curtain anymore. <laughs> That's always my concern whenever I'm making things um, out of curtain fabric. More denim, but these are getting a little bit lightweight for this up here. So yeah, I would, um, here's a corduroy in black. Corduroy comes in a million different colors. Um, more sheets, more of the same. Um, you could do, if we went into my little knit section, which is up here, way up there. So these are my heavyweight knits. So you could do a Ponty um, because Ponty is, it behaves a lot like a woven, even though it is technically a knit. So you could do like a heavyweight Ponty. That would also be nice. Um, I've even got this Ponty that looks like denim. That could be cool. Do you remember the jeggings that I made? gosh, 2020 maybe, spring 2020. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun options. How about something like this? I got this from Goodwill too, with the little golf. I mean, you could wear that to like a golfing event, <laughs> to go golfing if you golfed in skirts. Um, it's a little bit specific <laughs> and I don't really golf, but you know, it could be fun if you hang out at the country club a lot. Got any country club lifers out there? <laughs> the fabric itself though is, yeah, I think it's just like an upholstery weight woven. I guess this technically would be a jacquard, right? If we can see the wrong side, I think that's how that works. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know, just a lot of fun stuff. So shop your stash. You're looking for the sort of heavier weight, definitely structured, um, weightier fabrics that are in your stash. Um, if you're going to go shopping, the world is your oyster with this. Like she listed in the, um, in the listing, you can do twill, denim, same thing. Um, you can do suede, uh, you could do leather, the other side of suede. You could do, um, corduroy, you could do heavier weight cottons. I mean, it's a, a, it's pretty basic A-line skirt. The interesting thing about it is how you get in and out of it without a zipper. So the construction of it is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so try not to overthink the fabric part of it too, too much. Okay. And finally, let's talk a little bit about fit. You don't actually see a photo of the, or a line drawing or a photo of the back of the skirt. Um, I already own this pattern so I can see the instructions and they have the back. So the back is just a solid waistband and a center back seam and everything else is just an A-line skirt. So when it comes to fitting this, I really encourage you guys to start with your waist, even if your waist is smaller. If you are pair like me, start with a waist. All of these um, A-line skirts and things with waistbands, start the fitting starts from the waist no matter what's happening below it. So even make a mock-up of that waistband and just button it, make sure it's comfortable, sit down, stand up, you know, wear it around and, and make sure that it is going to be a good fitting waistband. Then make the body of the skirt using the hip measurement, if that's larger, the same, smaller, whatever it is. And then as you come up into the waistband, then start nipping and tucking and working out the top of that um, skirt portion to fit into the waist. And now that, that doesn't necessarily mean grading. I'm, I'm having a love-hate relationship with grading right now. Part of me feels like grading is just me being lazy and not actually wanting to go through the steps of getting it to fit. Um, part of me feels like it's very easy and approachable. So of course we should be grading. But I wanna encourage you because we have two side seams and a center front and a center back seam, treat those as if they were darts. So imagine if you're, you make the hip, the skirt from the hip, right? And from the hip measurement and your skirt's upper raw edge is four inches 
larger than what your waistband ends up being, you have eight seam allowances all the way around to pinch in and nip and tuck. And plus, since the back is so plain, you could a million percent add some back darts if you wanted to. I don't think that that would look weird or odd at all. So if you wanted to take in each of the um, vertical seams by like a quarter of an inch, not even that much, that's gonna get you half an inch per seam. So that's two inches all the way around. And then you can make up the other two inches by adding in little darts in the back, either one set or two sets, completely up to you. And four inches is a pretty extreme example anyways. So I am going to challenge myself to not just grade this skirt from waist to hip. I don't think that that ends up being super flattering. Um, and because it is sort of a basic design and, and really the superstar here is the construction, really challenge myself to kind of go in on some proper fitting techniques instead of taking the easy way out. But you do you. If you want to grade, by all means, grade away. Um, but so yeah, so that's what I am going to be doing. She has also, which is really interesting in the like instruction booklet, what the ease is at the waist, what the ease is at the hip. So there's no guessing game there. So when you go to do your fast fit worksheet, it's pretty much all the math is already done for you. And you're just analyzing intended fit and finished garment measurements. And that's it. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited to make this one. I think it's going to be really cute. Um, this, this could, we're trying skirts. We're really giving skirts a real chance here. I have like three or four on the docket. So if after this little whirlwind of skirt sewing, I still find myself not loving them for one reason or another, I think we'll know. And that's going to be okay. If skirts aren't my thing, we're going to be just fine. Um, but we'll see. This one I'm real, real, real excited about. This one I'm just as excited about as that Vogue wrap one. And that one I'm super excited about. So shop your stash, go get the pattern, um, post it whenever it's done. There's no deadline. Um, just use so together 22 hashtag tag me so I can see it. And you're good. That's all we're trying to do here. Just Something fun, no stress, nothing else, nothing new to worry about. We got plenty to worry about. But hopefully you're excited about this pattern and you wanna move it to the top of your to sew list. Um, it is for me. So, <laughs> But that is gonna do it for me today. I have linked to last month's Sew Together reveal. Um, if you wanna watch that, if you missed how that pattern came together. Um, so click the bottom right corner of your screen. That'll take you right to that video. Otherwise, I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.